you wouldn't give the special people in your life a generic brown box of things for their birthday. You give gifts so perfectly personal that even if you forgot to sign the card, they still know it's from you. 1-800-Flowers.com is here to help you do more of that. Make every birthday brighter with exclusive offers and great values on gorgeous bouquets and arrangements. To order today, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. You wouldn't give the special people in your life a generic brown box of things for their birthday. You give gifts so perfectly personal that even if you forgot to sign the card, they still know it's from you. 1-800-Flowers.com is here to help you do more of that. Make every birthday brighter with exclusive offers and great values on gorgeous bouquets and arrangements. To order today, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Bachelor Rehab Up. I'm Amy, here with the amazing Haley Strong. Haley, are you ready for an incredible and dramatic season of podcasting? What a what a journey this is going to be. Um, <laughs> has it been months? It, you know, I, we haven't talked since last year, so it's, it's, That's true. it's really great to get back together. I've missed you a lot. I have definitely missed you. How were your holidays? They were good. Low key, which was, you know, not too bad. It's, uh, I, the way I explained it to my mother is that December 25th is just one date on the calendar. We have lots of Christmases. It's fine. It's not like my wedding, which was horrifying in every in every uh, prospect and, and, and way manageable. Um, and that should only happen once in my life. So mm. could you, know. you <laughs> jumping ahead a bit, but could you relate to Sally at all in this episode where you're like, this was supposed to be my wedding day. <laughs> no, I could not relate to her. Everything she was doing was annoying me. <laughs> I cannot wait to get there. Yes, we will get into it. Um, yeah, we are in a new year, new season of The Bachelor. I have to say, it does feel like more time has passed just because this season, you know, they kept telling us like, OK, going back to basics or it's everything you miss or you love about The Bachelor. But I sort of feel like we're back in like Chris Soule's era. Like that's what yeah, the, and like the it, women it, and the lead kind of reminded me of. Yeah, it was, it definitely felt old school. It felt classic. Like we're traveling. Um, it also like we had one week off, but it does feel like longer. Mm -hmm. yeah, Not I that I'm so. like emotionally ready to get back into another three months of this. Mm -hmm. I promise I won't complain too much, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. And it, it's like we're embarking with that unknown bachelor. It's almost really old school where it's like, yeah. wait, did we see this guy before? Or is it a Jesse Palmer character? Yeah. Right. yeah. So um, before we get into it, a couple um, headlines, maybe just one, but um, you'd sent me some Bachelor Nation news that kind of crosses over into the Netflix, uh, Netflix Nation news, uh, a new couple alert. Yeah. Uh, Blake Horseman and Juliana from Love is Blind are together. You know what? Good for her. Um, Damien, the guy she was paired up with on Love is Blind, is shit. So, <laughs> you know, hopefully Blake's nice to her. Yeah, I was never a fan I, um, of Damien. So, um, but last I checked or last I, had, you know, come across Janina, there was like a reunion or something on Netflix and seemed like they were still together. So I didn't know that she was on the market. Good for her. Yeah, good, good for, for her. Yeah. Uh, anything else that we've seen? I've just seen kind Not, of like data about like Clayton's premiere and stuff like that from Bachelor Data. Like how many people did he kiss and, you know, but nothing like a big headline, I don't think. Yeah, nothing too crazy. When we get on to the um, topic of Sally, Bachelor Data did have put together a little bit of a timeline. Okay. Yes. That'll be fun to get into. Since they devoted a lot of airtime to Sally, <laughs> a contestant that didn't make it on the show, but it will be interesting to get into that but first let's talk about kind of how they introduced Clayton to us again up top and how they uh, introduced Jesse Palmer as the new host so what did you think of Jesse's debut I thought he 
was fine. Like, I, he was exactly what I expected. I don't expect him to, like, pop off the screen. But I thought he was good. Um, I like that he was kind of like, we're we're all in this together. We're all figuring this out together. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just don't really know what to expect from him. Yeah, it was very, like, enough about me. <laughs> Let's move on. Like, sort of like, yeah, you might remember me. I was a bachelor, but I'm happily married now. But he didn't really get into, like, get to know me at all. It's like, he just wants to get in there and host, it seems like. Yeah. So it kind of reminded me, you know, we mentioned every once in a while that show Unreal. And, like, their host was just kind of like a non-entity. <laughs> like, he just kind of was like, okay, this is the handsome guy that shows up, reads the cue cards. And, you know, it's not going to make a major error, but not popping off the screen but nothing to like really critique either no so with clayton they show him um going back to his hometown of eureka missouri and everyone's really excited to see him but yet timing wise michelle's season i don't believe had aired at all (laughs) at this point so uh yeah just uh gosh bachelor timelines man Mm mm-hmm Uh, And then he surprises his mom and his dad must have known that they were coming because he had the camera ready to go. But yeah, he was he was ready to rumble that that dude. What do you think his mom was thinking when he shows up when Clayton shows up at the door? You know, he's coming back like ostensibly from filming The Bachelorette. Do you think she's thinking like, okay, are you engaged? What's going on? Or did she have some clue that he was eliminated? I I feel like she had to know something, right? Like, why else would he be recording and, like, his dad be recording? Right. Yeah. So that was interesting. It wasn't like his mom was really, I guess his mom showed up in his intro package as well. And, like, talking about how she was a teacher and he would be perfect for Michelle. But, yeah, old news. She's just really excited that he's The Bachelor. And they then we saw a little bit of clips of him <laughs> this season with Michelle's season of like that date that they had and oh my mainly God. about the I kids. Roll, I roll my I rolled my eyes all over again at the letters that like I was just like, come on now. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah, was that the point in your I think it was your Instagram story where Ethan was just like, when is the content showing up? Because it was just a repeat of last season. Like they yeah, just showed the clips over was, again. It was I, for the fact that it was like a two hour episode. There was so little content. Like mm-hmm. I genuinely feel like there was like a tight 45 of stuff that actually happened. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so um, we also get a, a few more like traditional um, intro packages again, which had been gone from the pandemic seasons, although we're still in a pandemic, but you know, this we're, is back. we're back, baby. We're, back. we're fully back. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they're they're bringing like there's little sprinkles of like you, they still are, have carried over the um, women like in their hotel rooms while they're quarantined doing wacky things like jumping on the bed and stuff. But we're also getting them filmed in their hometown. Um, Isn't it going to be nice that we get to remember those three months right? where we could do stuff? Exactly. <laughs> What's going to happen with the next season? It's going to be back to La Quinta or something. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, I love La Quinta. It was the the hotel in New Mexico that really I was like, come on now. That's true. Like La Quinta would feel like, okay, we're going back. This is the, yeah, we'll be nostalgic for that. I love La Quinta. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um. So first we meet Shanae. She's, um. okay, well, actually, before we get into the contestants, I feel like we should mention up top, Um. in case people are just jumping in here, Um. we decided at the end of last season that for Clayton season, we didn't want to do a draft because we felt like the preview for the season that they aired a couple different times that you couldn't really avoid it. It was part of like the um, either the mental all or the finale gave away like the top three or at least the top two. And so it didn't really seem like fair from what we, we tried to be spoiler free and with our draft, especially so and then I felt like they mixed it up on I feel like they mixed up that trailer this time around and they showed different people, but I could just be yeah. remembering wrong. But. I don't know. And well, and it's 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 weird now um, because we kept seeing those girls, mm-hmm. but now we're like seeing them kind of knowing who they are. Mm-hmm. So it feels a little different. Right. So now we're like, wait, is that really her? So um, but. I had reached out to George, like, George, is there maybe some kind of modified, like a mini draft we could do or something? But 
you know, George doesn't like to half-ass things. He, we rely on him every season and he did not disappoint. He did a randomized draft. So we will have a draft this season. Um, Haley, you and I had no part in choosing. No. Um, and we're competing against the listeners. We all have 10 people and hey, maybe we have a chance of winning this time around. I, yeah, maybe. I don't feel great <laughs> about it, but yeah, I thank you to George for doing that. When I saw he had done it, oh God, I laughed and laughed. It was great. I thought yeah. it was so brilliant. Yeah, because I did miss um, coming into the season having like a rooting a interest, rooting as, interest. These, yeah, as these inter packages go. Like, oh, I could have got points for that. So we'll, we'll find out. We'll go to, we'll have a draft section at the end um, before we get to questions. So stay tuned. Um, but first we are, meet Shanae. She's from Sycamore, Ohio. She is also from a small town. You know, it's kind of like thinking like Tia from RE season where they show like, oh, there's only one stoplight. They, we got to have somebody that meets this sort of archetype. She has 840 people in her small town and she's got to meet somebody, somebody else, somewhere else. So, yeah, I bet she have to, has to set her set her bumble ranges pretty, pretty wide. <laughs> yeah. I've got to travel across the state. Um, I just, I knew from her package that she was going to be the drama. Oh, really? I could just tell she was like, I love competing. I never mm. lose. I'm like, oh, she's the drama. I can tell. Yeah. And I think that ties with the the preview. Yeah. Uh, then we have Gabby from Denver. She's an ICU nurse, a former cheerleader. And yeah, she was just like, Oh, another thing that stood out to me is like, I was curious going in, are they going to tell the women who the bachelor is? Because they hadn't watched Michelle's season. I guess they have. Yeah. But clearly they're like, I can't wait to meet Clayton. I think they saw like the cast and like, Mm, and they're like, this is the guy. Yeah. Right. So yeah, they're just going off of like probably small um, bits of information and a photo. So I saw a hilarious tweet that was something like, um, you know, we think there's a nursing shortage because of the pandemic, <laughs> everyone's like really w- worn down, but uh-huh. really it's all the nurses are on The Bachelor. <laughs> I think that wor- that that checks out for sure. Yeah. A lot um, of nurses this season. They yes. really needed a break. I don't blame them. Yeah, true. If you can, yeah, take your leave and go. So um, she gave me a little bit of crystal vibes maybe just kind of like her intonation like i could see see i got maybe like she would become a villain or maybe she'd be a front runner or something that the other women might be jealous of but amy every single woman on this season is a knockoff of somebody else <laughs> so true <laughs> So like true. Claire's a knockoff of like Chelsea totally. from a couple seasons ago. Yeah. I think I think it was Eliza who looks like Brie from Matt James this season. Mm. Um Genevieve looks exactly like Vanessa. Yes, she's like Vanessa Ashley I a little bit mixed in. Yeah. One of these girls looks exactly like Kaylin. Yes. <laughs> um Ethan said Rihanna looks like Anna from Matt James's season. Yes, and there was another one who um, she got eliminated, but her name was Lindsay, and she looked like Lindsay from way back on Sean Lowe's season, like his runner-up. Yes, she <laughs> does. So Absolutely, she does. Like, every single, like, maybe, like, every single one of these women is just, like, a, a knockoff version of, of somebody who's already been on this effing show. Like, every yeah. single one. I'm like, yep, this looks like this person, this looks like this person. A couple of them could be Hannah Brown. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yes, That's- so they're growing them in a lab at this point. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Where are they finding them? Like, I'm, I'm surprised we didn't have 31 Laurens ready to rumble here. <laughs> right. At least we have some new names in the mix. Um, Rachel, it says flight instructor, but like, it seems no different from pilot because she, when she's on the show, she's talking about being a pilot. So um, maybe something, I don't know. Maybe that's terminology. I don't know. But um, can you imagine if she had been on pilot Pete season? Oh my god, a match made in the skies. Yes. I really enjoyed Rachel. I would say she was probably my favorite okay. that we saw. Nice. Uh Daria. Um Daria made me happy that we didn't do a draft because I would totally would have drafted her <laughs> up top and then been so did she would have been like my night one, like, oh yeah, she got the video package. Great, I'm doing great. And then yeah, she got eliminated. So <laughs> But she is definitely catch. She was in her fourth year at Yale Law School um, and seemed like she was into Clayton. So 
yeah, that was, I was disappointed she left. I was pretty surprised too, because we did get so much like content from her. It felt like. Mm -hmm. Um, Susie, a wedding videographer from Virginia beach was the next intro package. Amy, she is wild. She is such a free spirit (laughs) and she lives her life outside of a comfort zone. That's true. Yeah. Well, she She did go to Japan. She needs a boring ass dude like Clayton (laughs) to really like, yeah, because she's so wild to just like really like rein her in. Right. The she is, to her she has been to Japan. Can you imagine how wild you would have to be to yeah. visit Japan? <laughs> I was very curious what her job was that took her there and how long she was there. But yeah, that was. Do you part think of her she intro. was like Susie in Tokyo, like Emily in Paris? I've been watching uh, Emily in Paris. I was going to ask you if you've, been, if you've caught up on that. I haven't caught up. I'm just. I'm still in the first season, but I could totally see that Susie in Japan. Let's try to find yeah. her old Instagram account. She was like changing the life of a, a company over there. Yeah. All right, Elizabeth. Yeah, who does she remind you of? Because she totally looks like she's from somewhere a, a past season. She just looks like like you know those um things that were popular, like the face meshes of like. <laughs> The perfect bachelor contestant, like that's mm, like Emily yeah. Maynard, yeah, a little bit like the twins um, from. Oh ben yeah, season. you know what? Oh, Ethan said, "Who was it that looks like the twins?" It was, I think, it was the other Lindsay. Lindsay W looks like the, oh, mm-hmm. like a, the twins. I could see that. Um, what I loved about Elizabeth's intro package was when she was on the phone pretending to like talk about a property to somebody. Oh, this property yeah. is definitely worth your investment. This property is in escrow. I've also been watching a lot of selling songs. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the Nothing But Netflix episode um, with uh, Geneva and Asia. Yeah. Um, talking about selling sunset. <laughs> uh, then we have Teddy. It was a big night for Teddy and she gets an intro big package. Yeah. Um, and we learn up front that she's a virgin. Um, but we also see her like sitting in a park with her mom and her siblings saying like, Oh, I've told my mom already that I'm going to the fantasy suite. And her mom's like, uh, you didn't mention that yet. So she seems like she's tired of being a virgin. Yeah. She said something like, well, I decided really young, so I was kind of too young to make that decision for myself, which is a good statement to make, I think. Uh, yeah, but you also don't have to follow through with the things you decided when you're young. <laughs> Can you imagine if we followed through on everything we decided when we were like 10? Like, what a nightmare. <laughs> imagine I'd if you had to keep sh- your hairstyle or something. Oh my God, or like I'd still be like the biggest fan of Good Charlotte. <laughs> still try and wear black eyeliner even though it doesn't look good on me <laughs> yes so um but i do like teddy i think she'll be a fun one to watch yeah i do, i like her as well i like that is she is she what i expected clay to go for or not like it's hard for me to tell because we don't know no. the man um but i like that he's going for her yeah, I had to laugh because there was a clip at the beginning where it was Clayton sort of talking to the camera. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm the bachelor after eight minutes of airtime, which was clearly filmed, you know, after the whole season was over and they saw the feedback and it was probably filmed at the women or the Mental after the final or, rose or men- yeah. 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 And uh and then it's like, Well, I am the bachelor because I believe in this process more than anyone. It's like, can you really claim that? I mean, I think Rodney believed in it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Like when Teddy was talking about, um, she was like, me and my sister sat down with the cast when she, when we knew I was probably going to make it. Um, and we looked at the whole cast and like, there was one guy who really stuck out to me and I was so excited. And, and then Rodney wasn't named the bachelor, but you were, so I'm here. (laughs) Rodney, Joe. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, That's what I was like waiting for. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's a little uh, hard to believe, but you know, if she can pull off little fibs like that, she'll probably get far on the show. Yeah. Socks are the number one most requested item in homeless shelters. Underwear is the second, shirts are third. At Bombas, socks were first. Made with comfortable details for everyday wearing. Then underwear and shirts, too. All designed to perfectly fit. At Bombas, every item you purchase means you're donating an essential clothing item to someone in need. One comfortable clothing item for you, one donated to someone in need. Bombas. Comfort for all. Get 20% off your purchase at bombas.com slash comfy. 
If you love to be remembered as the person who gives the best birthday gifts, I'm here to tell you that 1-800-Flowers.com is your ultimate birthday gifting destination. 1-800-Flowers has thoughtful and artfully created options that are guaranteed to deliver the best birthday surprise. Shop thousands of unique gifts at 1-800-Flowers.com for exclusive offers and great values. To order today, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. Now extended through January 14th, join a clean and spacious Planet Fitness for zero enrollment and only $10 a month. With tons of equipment and free fitness training, it's the perfect place for everybody to work out. Even me, mister, I'm so stressed I grind my teeth more than most people grind coffee. Especially you. Give your anxiety-clenched jaw a rest. My molars will be so happy. Start feeling fantacular today. Join in club or at planetfitness.com. Zero enrollment, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Deal ends January 14th, see club for details. Oh, then we end up with Sally as the final um, sort of video package that we get, which ties in nicely to like her entire half hour what? segment. What a waste of my fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to break it down because... I have to understand the logic behind this. I'm trying there to. Is none. I know. Obviously, nobody <laughs> thought this through. Yeah, they or really had no they content. Thought it through too much. Maybe this is fake, and oh. they knew they were just going to waste our time. Maybe. Like, why would we have started with 32 women? That's true. Right. Or we had to lose two. Oh, because did we still have 30 at the? I was confused about well, that too. Had... Like, did they have call in a backup or something? I don't know. I don't know. But also, I think we lost somebody else throughout the episode that didn't make it to the rose ceremony, but we weren't shown. Oh, interesting. I saw this on IG. You remember the girl who showed up in the bathtub? Yeah. We didn't see her for the rest of the episode. She wasn't at the rose ceremony. What in the world? (laughs) Yeah. Like, I saw on Instagram that she was like, I also had a conversation with Clayton that, like... We didn't click, so I left, or something like that. Why did they show that? Oh, because they so didn't want just... like they didn't want this like hemorrhage of women the first episode. But then why show her showing up? In... <laughs> yeah, great question. Who knows? Yeah, just to get the women commenting on it—that's really strange. Okay, yeah. So, um, Sally, it's funny because on the Entertainment Weekly recap. Her real job is spine surgery robot operator, which Wild. is very cool. But we never learned that because it always said that her job was previously engaged. Yeah. And apparently her ex fiance, he was he's like a uh, he has like a Ph.D. in like neuro surgery mm. or something like that. Wow. Did you see any rumblings of this? Like when they first released like the women way back when? Because I remember seeing something like, OK, no, people looked into I, it. They're like, she's like supposed to get married right about now. <laughs> No, I like completely shut down. <laughs> so, yeah, we get an uh, intro to her, but it's all like kind of her sad story about today was the day I was supposed to get married. Um, I was engaged and, you know, we were happy and plan- like everything was planned down to every flower. But there was a lack of trust in our relationship, which usually is code for cheating on these shows. Yeah. Um, and it didn't it wasn't really clear if she called it off or he called it off um, or it just was called off mutually. But um, so she's talking about, you know, I was feeling really good about this process, but now like it's really hitting me. I'm really emotional about it. And this leads into something we've never seen on the show before. So um, her going to stop at Clayton's room five hours before the limo um, arrivals are set to start. The and, wildest part when she left it was dark out yeah that was still like four to five hours before the night <laughs> was starting and that made me want to die right yeah i know it's getting darker earlier these days but yeah i know they start that those arrivals really late so that they can go into like five in the morning and everyone's gets even more you know hectic and delirious as they're filming um so they can get the, that raw emotion but i was so confused and it sounds like you are as well why if she just wants to leave let her leave just i mean leave. is she this great of casting like they're they're just want her on vip or something that's the only thing i could think is that either that or she's coming back but or was it like they just really wanted her they thought she'd be a good 
casting because of her story and were they were hoping that she'd feel like guilted into it kind of with Clayton. Like, I don't know why I, I, I really can't wrap my head around it because either like here's a couple scenarios. She's a plant like she was never going to actually participate in the season. Uh-huh. Be, like she actually did want to like be there sort of. Right. But then it's like and I think I, I think I might be a little callous when it comes to this. <laughs> like if I was cheated on, like I'm out of love. Like that's mm. like, I don't have that love anymore. It's gone. Yeah. Um, and I'm ready to move on. Or if you're not ready to move on, like when the producers come calling, don't say yes, say call me next year. Maybe I'll feel better. Yeah. About it. Yeah. I could see. Um, yeah, if you're like jilted or you feel like you're pissed at your ex fiance, it's like, well, I'm just gonna sign up for the bath bachelor or whatever. Like, it's like a angry moment. Like, I'm just gonna do something. Feel like I'm doing something. You don't want to go back on the apps or something, but you're like, let me just do this wild thing. Maybe they'll if they accept me, it's like, oh, it's a sign. Maybe this is what's supposed to happen. Or you just feel like you maybe want to move forward with something else and like put your focus on something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could see the producers jumping on the fact that whoa, she just like ended her engagement. We haven't had a story like that recent or something that we could really, like, I feel like they wanted to exploit that <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And we're hoping she'd at least make it to the limo arrivals at the very least, maybe. And and it's also kind of like on her part, like I get that, like I, I get if she's like too emotional to do it, mm-hmm. but like, Show up to night one. Yeah. You've already flown halfway across the country. You've already done your mandated quarantine. Just show up for the night one. See what happens. Right. Yeah. Make some friends. And yeah, so she shows up. Instead, it's like, okay, I don't want to leave without like meeting him or something. So it seemed like. Why? Yeah. That seems like a weird thing to do. <laughs> um. So I guess if she was going to like meet him and think he was like drafted gorgeous and like this is my person, like love at first sight type thing or something. But what was also wild is that she gets there and I don't know. Do you think he was prepped at all that she was coming? Because no, he okay. seemed pretty surprised and I don't yeah. think he's like a good actor. Right. So because I was like, maybe are they like trying to tell him? you know, try to convince her to stay because it was so weird to me that he would hear what she said. Like I was supposed to be married yesterday and I don't think I'm ready for this. And like, you seem great, but like, whatever. She just kind of said, like, I, I don't think this is the right thing for me. And he talks about how he was in a really bad place after a breakup and it took him like a couple of years to get over it. Mm-hmm. And then he turns, he heads out, like, give me a moment comes back with a rose like why would you tell somebody that's telling you this to stay i wonder if it was just like a like i want you to stay like so i i don't know like i think he like wanted to make her feel better about the situation yeah i mean i guess it could be on the sense of like hey like not that he's gonna say that but just like this is a fun experience like just try it and see like you don't need to head home kind of thing like i see something in you but it seemed weird to like here's a rose so you're like cut to the next rose ceremony already and can you imagine the drama if she had stayed and there's like a girl that wasn't even in the the arrivals with a rose i'm sure the producers are really upset but she stuck to her guns and um turned down his rose and stupid me i totally had forgotten the preview where it was like the first rose i hand out as bachelor i get rejected so yeah that i didn't even see that coming but we were tease that and i had pictured it at a rose ceremony mm-hmm. but this is the way they did or like it like the first impression rose or something oh yeah that's true too so yeah she she leaves and is this the last we'll see of sally uh, in our lives probably not <laughs> yeah i think now it's like she's an official cast so she can be on vip she could show up in the season later but they didn't preview that so that's kind of unlikely you never know so i also think it was maybe a way to kind of get clayton rattled a little bit too like okay so if she says she leaves and it's like he's already rejected and that might make him even more nervous or whatever but 
Mm -hmm. Uh, We jump to the arrivals and it's probably the first time I've seen like a bachelor like hype himself up that much like before the limo arrives and like he's like clapping when they're arriving. So that was a little odd to me, but whatever, you know, whatever whatever gets you in the spirit. Yeah. (laughs) So um, with these entrances, let's kind of talk through some of our favorites rather than some of them were a little forgettable, but anyone that really stood out in a good or bad way to you? Um, I liked NC who spoke, I believe she spoke Persian and Korean, which was cool. That's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one, maybe it was, oh, it was Sarah right at the beginning. She gave him like a little token. I thought that was like cute and memorable enough without being like too wild. Yeah, it was kind of clever because she said like, Hey, like we're both, I hear we're both tigers, you know, alluding to like where they went to school, but she was from a different school, but they still have the same mascot. So it's kind of a way to like connect and get to know them a little bit and be remembered. Um, Susie had that like buzzer on the handshake. She was like, I don't like hugs, but like, I love a good firm handshake. That was kind of fun. It was fun, but she didn't play it well enough. I think she was too nervous. Yeah, that's true. Um, um I loved um, Haley. She brought a jewel. She was like, oh, I, yeah. I don't know what she said, but she was like, I am an independent woman. But can you open this for me? And it was like yeah. a jar of pickles. Like, that's hilarious because I'm always like, can you open this for me? I'm so weak. Yeah, it was like, I need help from time to time. And then I would have loved if they just like dug into the pickles after that too. Like, hey, yeah. she brought food. So that's helpful. Want a pickle? <laughs> what about jill who had the urn of her ex-boyfriend's ashes oh a little much for me (laughs) she didn't strike me as like really goth or edgy but seemed like you know something that they would maybe make into like a quirky character or something um i liked i'm trying to think who it was um it was Sierra, I believe, where and I think she could have sold it a little more, but she was like, don't freak out. But I'm here from the future and I'm your wife. And so, like, it's just something that like a little twist on something that we haven't really heard before. Like, yeah, we're usually like, wow, well, like, should we just propose right now? But I like that. She's just like, yeah, I come from the future. So um, there's one that was really strange. I know you said you really liked Rachel, but her intro was yeah, with so- Holly. <laughs> Yeah, first we meet Holly, 63, who she looked great, by the way. Yeah, um, just add her to the cast. And uh, Clayton was perplexed. And um, then it turns out she was just wanted to introduce her friend, Rachel. Yeah, but it didn't even seem like they were really friends. It seemed like she yeah, was maybe like, was like, central casting. <laughs> it was like, so how do you two know each other? And she's like, oh, she's just my wing woman um, since I'm a pilot. So maybe if she had had wings on or something. And then... Also, Holly's like, well, actually, I think I'm here it's supposed to be for the senior bachelor. So, Haley, is this still happening? <laughs> we are not covering it. <laughs> Leave us alone. Uh, I thought that had been kind of buried. <laughs> like, just not like it was we're hi- or we're not hiring. We're casting for the senior bachelor. And then we never heard anything again. So. Um, what about the hold my nips, girl? Um, you know, I don't want anyone to hold my nips. <laughs> But I didn't mind them doing shots. So sure. Yeah, so she pulls out the two little bottles there. Um, then they showed Selena had moon shoes and was jumping and seemed like that can, carried throughout the night. It looked like she kept those on. Um, I like Tessa when they have like a way to remember a name. She's like, Tessa is asset spelled backwards. <laughs> so Yeah. And then there was a snake. Yes. I, I don't have enough information on this snake. I don't is it either. a pet? Where'd that come from? She was very comfortable with it. Yeah, and it seemed like all the other girls in the house, like, we didn't get any confessionals of, like, there's a snake! Yeah, that's probably why we didn't see much of it. <laughs> we probably should have had somebody that was deathly afraid of snakes. That was a miss. But I think that was Hunter. It looked like somebody spanked him, kind of like a callback to his intro with Michelle, but they didn't really give a lot of airtime to that. Um, what did you think of Kira, who is the doctor and she had lingerie and a doctor coat and stethoscope over it. I mean, if you look that good, go for it. <laughs> right. Okay. And we haven't talked about Gabby's, the pillow. Um, 
I just want to sit on your face. <laughs> I hated that. <laughs> a little much. Uh, I feel like she didn't quite sell it either. Like, obviously, it would be a little um, probably nervous doing that one. I actually kind of liked Claire on this one, too, because um, I know we'll get into Claire, but yeah, she, she doesn't have too many high points in this episode. Yeah, but, but I felt like this is a high point because she's like, yeah, I was going to do something, but I'm not really feeling it. So talk to me later. I can tell you what my cringy idea was going to be. <laughs> Yeah, that was cute. I did think that was cute. Yeah. Um, we had a couple of vehicles. The bathtub that you mentioned, where I don't even know if we know that person's name. Um, there was, I think they wanted to play on that fire truck from last season, where there was like mm-hmm. a toy fire truck ride on, like a little toddler one. Um, so um, Cassidy showed up in that one, and then Shanae like came right behind in the monster truck and like ran into it shouldn't totally demolish it but um i don't know i'm kind of over the the cars there was the classic car as well me too yeah um and there was uh one woman ivana who was totally silent i don't think we've seen i hated that that was brutal like yeah. we, we literally didn't Awkward. see her talk until she said goodbye yeah i think that was a miss like you think you're gonna be mysterious and they're gonna be like well i don't really have anything to go off of so Yes. Not a ton of like football things. There was that one flag on the field thrown, but yeah, I don't know. It wasn't like the most exciting night of entrances. It wasn't. It wasn't the most exciting night of anything. <laughs> Fair. Um, so there were he made a lot of statements after each of the the women as well. My though. wife is in this room. I am ready to propose right now. Yeah. <laughs> Another pretty one. A lot of pretty <laughs> women. It's like, okay. Yes, that is to be expected. Uh, so it seemed like Teddy was the one who stood out to him the most of that like initial like first impression. And she gets, ends up getting the first impression rose. So And the first that. kiss. True. And it was right after we see her saying I'm not going to kiss him, but I can tell he would be a good kisser. So. Oh, yeah, but we're, we're all like, yeah, mm-hmm. she's going to kiss him. Yeah. Um, do we see her going far? Are you liking this connection? Yes. yes. Yeah, I agree. I, yes, I do. I also don't feel like she's going to get in the drama of anything either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this night one, you know, um, apparently the women were all very supportive. <laughs> they um cut to like later in the season when we see the preview but yeah night one everyone seemed to be on their best behavior um except for claire so take me through your thoughts on what was going on with claire here i I don't know what happened like she had some good time i thought she had some cute like like they played cornhole they ate some chicken wings and then you know, somebody else came and was like, oh, can I steal you for a second? And so he left. And I think really that's what was that mm. kind of set her off. I don't think it was the actual interaction with Clayton. Um, but then she started like bad mouthing him to everyone there. And like, what is the point of that? Just leave if you're not vibing it. Yeah. She literally said she when, hated him. I know. And you can't expect when you're it's the night one. Everyone's competitive for, you know, getting the making the cut to week two. And you don't know any of these women. You have no trust with them. And so you're just saying, yeah, it wasn't the vibe. I'm not feeling it. He, he like lost terribly at cornhole. And I need someone that's he was way too nice for me. And I hate him. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and she was shocked when, you know, yeah. And I th- who, who was it that mentioned it? Serene. Serene mentioned it to Clayton. And I thought she did it in, in a way that was very like, I'm not trying to start the, anything, but like, you should know this. She and said I that you. She hates you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she was. Like, she did. She literally said. And then he was like, "Uh, I heard you hate me." And she was like, <laughs> "I, well, I never said that." It's like, yes, you did. We have that on film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. That it's almost like, did she come from the future? And she was like, Bachelor Nation, like not wanting Clayton to be the Bachelor. But yeah, it seemed like maybe more annoyed that the, their little mini date you know, wasn't like amazing chemistry, maybe mixed with like having a little too much to drink. And yeah, she didn't seem too upset to be leaving. I think they had her saying like, I would love nothing more. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But we didn't actually see him say, okay, I think you should leave. 
it was weird. It was like, we just saw, he came in later and said like, there was someone here that was bringing down the energy. And so I asked her to leave. But yeah, I don't know if that, they didn't get a good cut of that. Usually you think you would see that interaction. Yeah. So she gets sent home. Um, will we see her again on a paradise? Probably, right? Like, I feel like she's a pretty big character. Yeah, I think these these exits on night one are a little more memorable than some of the other ones that just like aren't selected. So I could see a VIP stint for her as well. Um, let's see. We saw, was it Elizabeth that gave a picture of her grand, great grandfather, grandfather? Babes, like don't give him that. <laughs> he has not earned it. Don't give a he family heirloom. heirloom. No, no. Will you hold on to, for, to this for me? No, no, no I cannot. I do not trust myself to do so. Exactly. I will lose it. Exactly. It is a very delicate piece of paper. <laughs> um, we see Kira give him a physical on the mini date. Um, she gets a kiss out of that. Uh, I was surprised looking at Bachelor data that Clayton is one has like the most kisses on night one of the most recent seasons. I would have thought maybe Pilot Pete or somebody Ari. Yeah, not. Uh, he kissed five different people that we were, he that were showing. He kissed five different people? Yeah. Oh, my God. I know. Where are you finding the time? I, I don't even know if I kissed five different people in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he kissed Eliza, too. She asked him, she had, like, flashcards. And can I kiss you or do you want to kiss or something? So he said it. She's like, oh, I'm just going to teach you the pronunciation. That's kind of cute. Cute way to, like, mm -hmm. move things along. It could have been that, like, the women spotted that he was kissing Teddy right away. So then they might have been, like, more on the move. Yeah, to make true. it happen. Um, oh, I liked Mara, too. We didn't see a lot of her, but she was like, Mara, like marinara. So she kept bringing up <clears throat> marinara sauce. So it's making me hungry. <laughs> um, and then Rachel. They had a lot of chemistry, I thought. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, anybody else that stood out in kind of these mini date situations? I thought Genevieve did. Maybe it's just because I find her very pretty. Mm -hmm. Although I did get annoyed immediately when she was like, <laughs> Oh, I know what you're going to say. All I want, all I've ever wanted is to be a mother and wife. Like, oh. I just, I will be crushed if it's not with Clayton. I'm like, Girl, yeah. you met him one hour ago. Like, you can do better. See, I thought you were going to say that. They made their whole conversation about my parents are celebrating their 32nd anniversary. Oh, my parents are celebrating their 30th anniversary. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, like, congratulations. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. Yes. So um, then cut to the rose ceremony. And so we've lost Claire. We've lost apparently that bathtub woman. And we've lost um sally and teddy has the first impression rose he hands out roses to serene who is like the most beautiful mm. person i've ever seen on this show totally like her name like fits Holy her perfectly shit. she is so gorgeous yes um serene Susie, eliza rachel nc kate cassidy um cassidy i think they we saw quite a bit of her. Like she just seems very high energy. Um, I can see her being a like VIP person for sure. If she's not at the end, um, Elizabeth, Kira, Shanae, Sierra, Mara, Marlena, Genevieve, Melina, Gabby, Jill, Lindsay W, Hunter, and Tessa. Um, I thought it was interesting. They had a couple of women like having ITMs at the end saying like, oh, it's so hard to like say goodbye. Um, I think they showed Elizabeth saying that, maybe Cassidy. So I was like, okay, are they setting them up to be like the nice girls, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, or is it that contrast that um, because we see a toast at the end where it's like, cheers to the most supportive group of women I've ever met, girl power. And then I was also that. like, do you not have any friends in your <laughs> real life? Yeah. <laughs> this is the most supportive group of women you've ever met? Yeah, what is that based on? <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. Like, do you, would you like me to be your friend? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm a good hype woman. <laughs> totally. Um, so we lose, um, unfortunately, Haley, we lose Haley. Oh, what a shame. Pickle jar. 
pickle jar gets cut over urn girl not a surprise to me jill got to stay um daria ivana the silent one samantha jane Lindsay d and rihanna so we lost rihanna as well um yeah and then we see the clips for the season did anything jump out at you differently this time around seeing it was a little bit different cut i think it was a little bit different like we saw that ride that we hadn't seen before Mm -hmm. um nothing too crazy i was trying to be like I was trying to be like, are are these actually the people who are in the in the end or no? I know. Yeah, I couldn't. It seemed like it was a little bit different. Um, maybe they got the feedback that people didn't like <laughs> taking all the mystery away. And they're like, OK, we'll mix it up a little bit. So or they could they could finally, Haley, be pulling something on us. <laughs> and maybe it was all maybe we took the bait and we're like, OK, we're not going to do a draft because we know everything. and um. And even saying that, I totally, I'm like face blind. I do not remember who was there, but I couldn't in good faith do the draft because I would, you know, go back and watch it and try to yeah, figure definitely. out my pick. So speaking of that, let's, let's find out who's on our draft. Yeah, let's what do it. What did George CTV give us? Um, yeah, is this the closest we'll get to like a Bachelor Brandt Steel? <laughs> like I think we so. have our randomized draft. Yeah. Um, on my team, we have Gabriella. Eliza, Jillian, Sierra, Genevieve, Sarah, Haley, Sally, NC, Samantha, and Kate. Mm-hmm. Um, so you lost. It's kind of funny because the people that you lost, Haley, Sally, NC, Samantha, apparently in this randomizer, you drafted them at the end of your draft. So you're right. You know, you're doing well yeah. so far. Um, what do you think of your first round pick, Gabby? Is that something you might have done? I feel good about that. I also feel good about having Genevieve on my team. Mm-hmm. Um, Sally for only being present in the first 20 oh, yeah. minutes of the episode was like my high score. Of the episode. <laughs> got you some points. Might yeah. get a VIP point out of it at the end. Yeah, um, I got I got a rose point from her, which was nice. She didn't oh, accept yeah. it, but I got a rose point. True. Um, on my team, my first draft pick was Hunter, which we didn't really talk about her too much. Um, I remember her coming out and like being really high energy and almost like really polished. Like she had practiced her intro. I don't remember what she said, Um, but yeah, I'm okay with that. I could see her being, not knowing what was in her bio, but I could see that being maybe one of my early picks. I have Hunter, Susie, Rachel. um, I like those picks as well for my top three. Um, Then I had Ivana and Daria, which totally, yeah, I would have drafted Daria for sure. Serene. Okay. I feel good about that. Uh, Rihanna. I lost Claire. I lost. Um, I hope she got me some points. She she added a little something, something. And Lindsay and Melina. So, yeah, feeling all right about that. And listeners, you guys are currently in the lead of the draft. Um, you have Mara as your first pick. Marlena. I feel like she's a maybe a dark horse. Elizabeth. Cassidy. Tessa. Lindsay. You only lost jane you have teddy as your eighth pick so she earned a ton of points for you shanae and kira so i think the listeners their eighth ninth and tenth picks are probably maybe their strongest but um, this should be fun to follow along and now we have a little bit of a rooting interest so i can report that the listeners currently are ahead with 25 Haley, you have 24 good on Uh, me yeah and i have 18 so this will be fun to follow along thank you at george ctv as always all right, and let's see. Did we have some questions? We do pull those up. We also got some questions on Twitter. So we have, um, let's see. This is at that Leon Inc. One. My wife and I are wondering what happened to Hunter's snake. Missing at the rose ceremony would be a much better season if the snake was at loose in the mansion, randomly eliminating contestants. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, we definitely needed more info on that snake. Does she like snakes or was it like a Holly situation where they just went to like a Hollywood animal you know, casting and we're like, we need a sidekick here for one of our entrances. Um, she did have a pun. She said love at first hiss. So she had something. She didn't love it. at first bite. That's what I thought she was going to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the phrase, right? 
And then the RGP out of context account says, so the women are so happy with <laughs> says Colton, but that's a mistake everyone is making. So with Clayton, because they are hoping he ages to look like Jesse Palmer, right? Do you see the similarities? I do a little bit. Yeah, I've seen that mentioned. Even kind of how they're dressed, their stance, I think that adds to it. Yeah. So. If dog people made dog food, it wouldn't be sold in a 50-pound bag in the hardware aisle by the shoe polish. It would actually be food. It would be made with real, fresh meat and veggies gently cooked to preserve their nutritional value. You know, like food. The Farmer's Dog was created by dog people who cook and deliver fresh, healthy food. Try the Farmer's Dog and get fresh, pre-portioned meals tailored to your dog's needs. Tell us about your dog, build your plan, and get 50% off at thefarmersdog.com slash listen. That's thefarmersdog.com slash listen. All right. Addison Mueller is bringing up something that we've mentioned a little bit. So Addison is is uh, seeing the writing on the wall as well. How confident are you that Sally will be making an appearance on Bachelor in Paradise? Okay, give it a percentage, Haley. I'm giving it a I'm giving it 81. Ooh, hi. Okay. Yeah. I'll give it a 70. If she gets back with her ex or something, who knows what the situation there is. You said the Bachelor data had some info on that. Oh, yeah. Um, so she posted from her bachelorette or one of her friends posted from her bachelorette party in Mexico, like August 14th of 2021. Um, and then the bachelor begins filming September 26th, which is allegedly Sally's wedding date. Um, and Sally was tagged with her ex fiance in Mexico on Instagram in late November, 2021. Um, So after the season? Yeah. So, I mean, if you are doing your bachelorette party and within the, I I don't know, I feel like if you're doing your bachelorette party and six weeks later, you're like signed up to be on The Bachelor. I don't know, man. I feel like there's not enough time to heal. Do they have a honeymoon planned? And that's why she's like, well, we just got to go to Mexico now. Maybe. (laughs) Hmm. And then Jade commented on on this post actually oh, really? and she said just for more insight into casting I never auditioned never applied was called three weeks before filming to come in for an interview I was anonymously nominated they oh. told me I found out the night of the limos it was by a producer who ran it in similar circles I was told the day I went in for an hour interview that I would if that I was cast if I passed medical psych background checks. I know also know Emily Maynard was cast in a similar fashion. I also know some of the girls apply for seasons, get two or three seasons before they get cast because the producers keep them shell for future seasons for certain reasons. Not saying her timeline isn't confusing, but it, it could have been an atypical casting process for her. Yeah. Well, I never expected it to be a t- typical casting process for her. I'm just still saying that like, if they broke up as soon, I mean, maybe <laughs> Sally cheated in Mexico. Oh, that's a, oh. I'm not putting that rumor out there. Right. But six weeks is a quick turnaround. So even if we give Jay, like, even if we say Sally had the three weeks, or like Jade her had, friend was like, I'm gonna nominate her because she deserves something like yeah. good out of the situation. That's still like a quick turnaround. And she's still choosing to go on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is that the new flex? Like, oh, I didn't even apply. I had no idea. (laughs) Anonymously. I don't even know who signed me up. Uh We have from Alex Trias. Did Claire know instantly she wasn't going to get a rose? So played up hating Clayton to get some TV exposure before being sent out. No, I think she was a little bitter that he like went on to the next girl so quickly and then Mm -hmm. just was pissed off and then was a little too drunk to be able to recover. Yeah. Yeah, I think she picked up. It did seem a little awkward, their interaction. Like he he was like kind of eager to go talk to the next person, but it's nothing that wouldn't be salvageable. Like I'm sure no. she like, was still memorable. And um, Justin Feinberg, is Claire a villain or is Claire a hero for being the single most realistic person ever cast on the show? How many other people outside the Bachelor bubble would have one conversation with Clayton and nope, right out of dating him? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not willing to kill, call her a hero or a villain here on the fence <laughs> i don't even know if i'm on the fence i'm just kind of like i think she's just like she got too drunk and i think she would have stayed if she could have because you like mm-hmm. i feel like she was trying to backtrack in the conversation about clayton like i feel like she was pissed that she left i think she mm-hmm. wanted some social media followers and didn't expect whatever this was to like happen yeah yeah 
uh, Justin Feinberg, have Amy and Haley ever lady and lady and the tramp a sausage with their significant others? What ideas could Eliza have used to reference her German background to Clayton without making it awkward? Hey, there's a love Justin for always bringing up something that we forgot to mention. So that was an entrance we did not mention, but yeah, definitely not. I have not done that. Um, no, of course not. You know, I don't want to involve food in anything. Yeah. Except eating. <laughs> Yeah, could they have just sampled it in a, another way? Or could she have, um, you like know, a little like German a, food, like October Fest outfit yeah, or something? Yeah, that would have been adorable. Yeah. Gary Hogan, is this bachelor and majority of the cast the yeah, most I don't know, bland? Time. <laughs> the most bland that ever blanded? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's some women in there that I would hang out with in real life. Yeah, yeah. And we've, we've shared our thoughts on, you know, not our first, second, third, fourth pick for the season, but you know, they want to go back to the old school. Tim Shields, I don't even watch the show, but I still find myself exhausted by yet another iteration of the franchise. My question is, Amy and Haley, how do you do this? Um, through the love of our listeners. Truly. It's the only thing that keeps keeps me going. And, you know, we always want that fairy tale, <laughs> even if we're not like initially yeah. like, excited for that person. Um, we get sucked in. So, yeah, we do. Yes. And yeah, it's like it. tradition at this point. We've just been doing it for so long. Yeah. Like we're never going to give it up. <laughs> uh, does Doug have any takes? Is he back in watching Clayton? Um. Yes ish. Okay. I don't know if he's watched. I don't know if he's watched the episode, but he, he did just have some takes. takes. Okay. He did he said I didn't watch yesterday as I despised the first episode as much as the the men tell all, but I figured mm. I'd send in a few questions anyway. Is there anything Clayton can possibly do this season to alleviate the shitstorm he's going to face when he talks about hooking up with three women in the fantasy suites? Wait, do they actually just have a foursome? <laughs> I feel what like Clayton's going to end up with somebody in the end and and like the shit storm's just going to pass him. I feel like it's not going to be that bad. Yeah, maybe the producers are like, you have to do something interesting because people are not, maybe they had got the feedback by that point and they're like, people are not excited for you. Um, yeah, I haven't got a good sense of if he ended up with someone. I did see that he is like selling his condo in missouri like he's not a small town guy anymore and is moving mm -hmm. to arizona i believe i think he has a oh dog. arizona really moving up in the world yes so i don't know that anyone was from arizona so i don't think it gives any clues that way but yeah um yeah i think he'll he'll have some some way to to uh i don't know redirect the attention i think so too um I used to tell people that hell for me would consist of a CFL fantasy draft show hosted by Jesse Palmer and two equally inept sports pundits that lasted for all of eternity. Did he even do, did he do even one thing last night to make us believe he's not the blandest guy on the planet? Not yet. Yeah. It was odd that they kind of breezed over. It was just like, I was the bachelor, but they didn't draw on any of his actual hosting experience. Like no. do you think he'd want to like say, well, I'm really qualified. I've like, you, or you might know me from you know espn or something i guess you can't really maybe yeah. name other networks but but espn's an abc property oh, so yeah why not <laughs> cross promote yeah uh which which one of the women do you think i should have a crush on spoiler i'm a sucker for people who aren't crazy Teddy. if i had to guess it would probably be genevieve mm, okay yeah who have been his like crushes in the past I can't remember. Like, I can't, I just can't remember. But I feel like Genevieve sticks out to me as somebody who I think Doug would like. Who do you think? Who do you think Doug should have a crush on? I was going to say Teddy. Yeah. Because she seems like the crushable one. Um, and I would say she like maybe. I'm trying to think who she reminds me of. Is she an original? <laughs> I feel like, yeah. Yeah. Not the typical. I mean, we always have to have a virgin on the season. How do you think? Clayton will react to the virgin news. We didn't see like a preview of that, which I was surprised. I think he'll appreciate it and respect okay. it. She, yeah. I, you know what? I think personality wise, she really reminds me of Serena, uh, Serena P. Yeah, just I because can see she's that. like 
kind of like bold but like pragmatic like mm-hmm. she kind of has like a realistic approach to the situation but is like bright and, she, and intriguing yeah and she could joke with him which i think was kind of like serena's vibe with both matt and grocery store joe mm-hmm. do we see like teddy maybe being the type to pull a serena and say like okay like i was kind of infatuated at the beginning but not really feeling it i think i'm gonna turn down something or yeah i think she could be that person Mm -hmm. yeah i think we'll see more of that maybe (laughs) um just because they didn't have a season to like fall in love with the lead like yeah it's not one of those seasons where people are coming in kind of obsessed with the lead it's sort of like yeah i'm hope i hope for what what could happen but yeah yeah um and then doug's last take is it wrong that i'm already counting the weeks until we get a break from this franchise i will still watch but the combination of the blandest host and lead ever combined with already having been subjected to like to like a million other leads this year has me pretty burnt out stay for the women that's where they bring the drama yeah. like they're okay with having bland leads because they'll just cast around that i think so yeah i'm also excited we're back to monday nights with our True. podcast on tuesdays and True. we have like the whole week to kind of you know get through it and like our tv schedule is very light mm-hmm. until i would say the end of the season like this is really the only show <laughs> that i'm sitting down and watching every week right like right. At, at the time it's on totally yeah yeah in that sense i was like re- like okay with it coming back even though it has been like so many seasons back to back i was like yeah. okay it does feel like new year like it's starting out with something new to watch so i do like that yeah, yeah and like i i felt like my fall tv schedule was so like this day is this this day is this that like i had no tv freedom i guess <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah you don't want that. tv to be like a slog yeah <laughs> tv should be our relaxing so yeah, yeah like I know you and uh, Ethan had a very rigid, like, this is what we do on the Tuesday night. This yeah. is what we do Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Like, it was like every night. It was a, it was a different TV night. Well, Dancing with um, the Stars takes up, like, if you're into watching that show, it takes up a lot of time. It does. And, like, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. But it was, it, yeah, it's mm-hmm. like that. And then The Bachelor. And then Survivor on Wednesday. And then mm-hmm. podcasting on Wednesday. And it's like, the week is gone. And then this, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, right now we're watching... We're we're going back and forth so we don't get burnt out on either thing. We are watching some old seasons of Top Chef and we're doing a rewatch of Superstore. Okay, nice. Yeah. yeah. Superstore is great. Like if if you have not watched it, you need to watch it. It's it's fantastic. And you said you're diving into Emily in Paris. Are you on season one or two? I'm in season one. It's just like a background show for me. Like yeah. if like if I'm doing work and I'm I'm not like actively talking to somebody, like I'll just have it on in the background. It's, good, like, it's not scenery something. show. Yeah, it, it's it, I'm it's kind of silly, I, but <laughs> yeah, it's silly and it's kind of like I'm not super engaged with like Emily as the main character. I really like her two friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the nanny and then the the, the girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like them, but I'm like not super engaged with her. But it's just like it's bluff like i don't need to be like i'm not gonna write an article about why it's the worst thing to ever happen to anyone like i don't care that much (laughs) right right yes all right well i am excited to um keep up with the season with you Haley, and the listeners and our interesting draft that we have going the randomizer yes oh i was gonna ask you are you getting bachelorette vibes from anyone not yet off the bat. I have, it didn't even cross my mind honestly okay I was thinking Elizabeth and Susie it's kind of who stood up to me but I could see like a Genevieve as well I just feel like can we really have a lead named Susie <laughs> right Susie and Sally there was some kind of like old school names coming yeah. on and then the older lady Holly had like a more like young name <laughs> yeah <I> love- <laughs> will we see Holly on the senior bachelor <laughs> probably yeah <laughs> So yes. Um Haley, where can people keep up with you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at H Strong underscore. You can check out everything I'm reading at the Strong Library. Um and then on New Year's Day there was a Taskmaster New Year's Street. So Grace Leader and I are gonna talk about that this Friday Ooh. um on my Twitch channel, twitch dot TV slash Haley Strong. Uh so check that out coming up. Nice. And you can find me on Twitter at RTP Recapper. Until next time. Bye. Bye.
To show you how easy it is to file a claim with GEICO, we hired a nature show host. In the native habitat of a suburban driveway, the poor victim of a broken windshield is left assessing his vehicle utterly helpless. Well, not true. If he's got GEICO, he can file a claim online, over the phone, or with his handy mobile app. But like a lone gazelle, he'll suddenly be left to fend for himself, awaiting his terrible fate. Nope. GEICO will assign him a designated claims team to help him out, too. So the gazelle gets his car fixed and everything. Wow. Nature is so cool. GEICO. Great service, without all the drama. Progressive is America's number one motorcycle insurer, so we understand motorcycles. No, really, we have a bike translator. Okay, so this bike says she is struggling with her place in the motorcycle community. Well, she says she hasn't peaked yet, but she's having a little epiphany, okay? Oh, that maybe life itself is the peak. Hmm, interesting. In my experience, I found that... Oh, so I just translate. Not allowed to have opinions. Got it. Quote with Progressive and see if you could save with America's number one motorcycle insurer. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates.